<laughs> All right, shall we? Shall we? Hold on, let me, I hear noise. noise. Somebody's microphone? Yeah. DeAndre, I'm muting you. <laughs> Hot <laughs> mute. <laughs> All right. Uh, Okay. All right. I guess we can begin. We are cool. Very good. I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Yasmine Flores, and I'm one of the coordinators for the music department. My colleague, Dr. Melissa Garola, is here with us today as well. She's also the other coordinator of the music department. And um, one of our guests today, just kind of in there with us, is Dr. Alina Vasquez, who's our district-wide. Um, today, we are presenting the second installment of Mamu's Coffee Clatch, or Clatches. This is Clatch number two. And I'll mention it again, what a clatch is. I know Maria Gomez would probably know what that is. It's kind of a, it's just like a little gathering over coffee, basically. And so we hope that you have your cup. I've got my cup right here of coffee. And with us today, too, is Miss Fon Chen from the music department. We are very honored huh? to have from her. The department. From yeah. the math department. What did I say? Oh, <laughs> I recruited her already. She doesn't know that yet, though. Oh, okay, okay. So she's. the ten-year process again. Yes, Ms. Fan Chen from the math department is with us to be um, to discuss. Uh, intervals in music and to kind of start to introduce the harmonic series, which we'll be discussing on Friday. So good morning. Welcome, everybody. This is Mamu. He's our little elephant slash. Uh, can you guys see the violin in his face? That's the trunk. I thought that was so cute. Marketing created that for us. We are recording this session. We hope you don't mind. I have not posted the first session to YouTube yet, but I will be posting that as soon as I get a moment to do that. So, um, and of course, have you liked this on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube? We are at EPCC Music there. Okay, and I've already introduced us. Um, my picture was taken many years ago. That's what I used to look like, more or less. And of course, I am accompanied today by two well-accomplished ladies. And here we go. Today we are discussing intervals and you will need a notebook and a pencil or pen so that you can write stuff down in case you accidentally learn something, as I always put it. And only by accident, because that's always the best way to learn. Um, so grab that while we are chit-chatting and let's get started. I believe Dr. Garola is starting us off here this morning. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Again, thank you for joining us. So we're gonna go ahead and kick it off by talking about what are intervals. So in music, um, it is the distance or relationship between two pitches, frequencies, or tones, okay? They are named by the diatonic tones or notes with different letters. So if we all know in music, we have the seven letters of uh, the music alphabet. So we start at A and at G, and then we start all over. Um, the most basic intervals are half steps, um, which are equal to the distance of one tone or pitch. And we'll go ahead and kind of show you guys that on a keyboard instrument in just a second. And then we also have whole steps, which equal to the distance of two pitches, okay? on a keyboard instrument. Um, when we arrange these intervals um, and in specific patterns, we get different scales, we get different kinds of melodies, and that's what makes music so unique because music is an arrangement of all these different intervals kind of coming together so we can build the melodies. Um, so when we put all of this together and we get the scales, scales are basically our sets of pitches in ascending or descending order. There are different kinds of scales. Each type has a specific pattern. Um, this pattern is a combination of all these whole steps and all of these half steps that give it its quality. Okay, so that's basically we're 
you know, each one has a different sound. Minors usually tend to sound sadder in nature, um, whereas majors tend to sound um, happier, okay? So we're gonna kind of dive into one specific scale, the chromatic, because this is the easiest one that we can kind of show you all of the half steps. So a chromatic scale basically is made up of 12 half steps. Um, so if you look at the keyboard here on the screen, and we see on the far left-hand side, we see the C here. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see my cursor or not, but see. Oh, there you go. Thank you, guessing. <laughs> um, so C, and then up to the black note, which is the C sharp, that is what we call an interval of a half step, okay? And then if we, so white key to black key is a half, and then if we go from black key down to white key, so C sharp down to the D is also a half step. Now, there are several uh, places on the piano where we do not have a black key key in between two white keys, and that's also the distance of a half step. So if you look at E and F, we also have that distance of a half step. So really, the chromatic scale, if we're looking at the C chromatic scale, starts at C, goes up to C sharp, then down to D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and then finally C, okay? And then if you counted, we had 12 total half steps, okay? So all of the mathematics to it, no matter what scale you're in, um, major, minor, or chromatic, it equals to 12 steps, okay? Um, we're gonna kind of look at that a little bit more as we progress um, throughout the PowerPoint. So, all right, so we also have different kinds of intervals other than our half steps. And that's all the, again, the distance between one note on the key to the next. So if we look at C, which is that first note, right? Um, from C to the next white key is the step of a whole. It's a whole step interval, okay? Um, if we go from C to E, and you guys see that little diagram where it kind of points to the little um, intervals. Uh, from C to E, we have the distance of a third, okay? And that's because we have two half steps, right? So from C to C sharp is one half step, and from C sharp down to D is another half, right? So that's the distance of two, right? And then um, same thing with the third, right? So we have C to C sharp, that's one. Then C sharp down to D, right? That's another one, that's half and half, right? And then from D up to D sharp, and then D sharp down to E, that gives us three, right? So we're adding all those half steps together to give us the distance. Then if we go from C all the way to F, that gives us a fourth, right? So it's basically counting the notes, okay, from the first initial note up into the last note that we have. Um, on this on the scale, so if we if we look at it in sheet music, they usually stacked against each other, right? And then we count every line and every step. Right, so we'll go ahead and kind of take a look at that as we progress. So we also have, if you can go back just a sec, we have distances of a fifth also. So from C to G, we have the distance of a fifth, right? And then if we add all of those half steps together, together we'll get the fifth. And then from C um, to A is a sixth. And then from C to B is a seventh. And then from C to C gives us the eighth, which as we know in music is the octave. Okay, so there are the different combinations of intervals. Now the intervals can also sound major, or they can sound minor depending on the combination. Okay, all right, we can go ahead and move forward. All right, so this is what I was talking about. So in order for us to kind of figure out what that distance is, we basically count every line and every space from where the note starts up until the last note. So in this case, we have the bass clef and we have the C at the bottom, so that would be considered step one, okay? And then the line right above it would be step two, right? Then the space would be step three, and then the line above that would be step four. And then we finally get to the fifth line, which is um, G, okay? So how do we count that as well as in music? So line one is C and then the line above it, right? D. 
D and then E would be the space and then F would be the line and then G would be that last space. OK, so count all the lines and all the spaces starting from the bottom note to the top note. The first note always starts with one. OK, pretty simple. Does anybody have questions with that? Pretty simple, right? Not not overly um, difficult. So we're going to kind of have you guys um, count a little bit of these intervals. I'm going to you know, call on a couple of you that are here with us this morning and see if you can figure out what the basic intervals for the two staves that you see before you are. OK, so we'll start with the treble clef, the one at the very top, the first measure. Um, let's see. Joel Ponce, can you tell me what the the distance of the interval in that first measure is? A second. Very good. It's the second. So we started on the letter. What letter is that first one? It's uh, F. Very good. And you went down to? E. E. So that F would be one and then down to that E would be two. So it works if you go up the scale and it also works if you go down the scale. OK. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's choose somebody else. That second measure. Mm, Nathaniel. How about you? Hello. If you count from the very first note and then go up to the next note, what would that distance be? A second. Very good. That is also a second. Very good. All right. Let's see. Let's choose somebody else. Mm, Marlene, how about that third measure? It's a fourth. It's a fourth. So what's that first note, Marlene? I mean, this one's C. That one's C, and then that second one is? F. F, so C, D, E, and F. Very good, let's try another one. Um, DeAndre, how about you get that fourth measure for us? What's the distance of that interval? That's a third. Very good, so what are two notes? Uh, B and the E. Very good, so E is the first one down to D, and then to C, that would give you three. Very good. All right, let's see, who else do we have in here? Hmm, um, let's see, let me choose somebody I don't know. Lorraine, how about that last measure? What is the distance of that last one in that first stave? Is she with us today? Lorraine, no? Michael Ray Pena. Ooh, Michael Ray Pena, yay. <laughs> That's a third. Very good. What are our two notes, Michael? D and F. Very good. So D, E, and then F, distance of a third. OK, let's do maybe two more from the bass clef. OK, so as we know, the bass clef, we start on different letters, right? Um, let's see, Stephanie Lopez. What's that first? What's the interval of that first measure in the base state? First oh. measure. <gasps> the third. Very good. What are our two notes? B and D. Very good. B and D. All right. Okay, one more. Um, let's see. Nancy, how about that second measure? Hello, that's a fifth. Very good. What are our two notes? B and E. Very good. All right. Very good, guys. So not overly difficult, right? And so remember that the different combinations of these whole and half steps are what basically give us our different sounds, our different intervals. And then when we put those together, we get different scales, we get different melodies and, you know, different compositions like how composers compose right all right so let's go ahead and keep moving forward so now let's talk about a major scale so we know that the chromatic scale is made up of all of those 12 half steps right well a major scale has a different set of intervals to give it its quality Okay, uh, major scales are basically one of the most commonly used scales. It is made up of seven notes with a duplicate note at the end because the end is uh, the octave, right? Um, and major scales to us basically sound happy, 
they sound harmonious, right? So the basic pattern for a major scale is a whole, which has two steps, right? Whole, two steps, half, which has that one step, then whole, two, whole, two, whole, two, and then half. Okay, and if you add all of those numbers together, right? So two plus two is four, plus one is five, plus two is seven, plus two is nine, and then plus two, 11, and then that last one is that half step, which equals our 12 half steps. So they always equal up to 12, right? So chromatic scales, major scales, and minor scales will always equal up to those 12 steps, okay? Not overly difficult. All right. OK, so let's look at that on the keyboard. All right. So let's start all the way to C because these are our easiest ones. So we're looking at a keyboard. We start from C to D. OK, so from C to C sharp is one C sharp to D is two. Right. That gives us our whole and then D, uh, D to D sharp and D sharp to E. That also is two. So that gives us the whole step. Right. And then we have E to F, so we don't have that black key. So remember, again, if there's no black key there, that's a half step, right? And then we have F to F sharp is one, F sharp down to G, that's the two, that makes it that whole step, right? And then G to G sharp, and then G sharp to A, that again gives us the two, which also gives us that whole step. And then A to A sharp, and then A sharp to B, that is also a whole step. And then again, we get to a place on the keyboard on the piano where we don't have that black key. So we have another half step that which gives us that half interval, that one step. OK, so on the actual stave, right on the staff, what does it look like? Well, it looks like this one down here. So we have C is on that bottom. This is middle C and middle C corresponds to the middle of the piano, right? Um, and then you go up by step, right? And it gives us each of those intervals. So from C to D, and then D to E, E to F, F to G, G to A, A to B, and B to C. So again, if we add all of those up, it gives us our 12, right? Pretty easy, not overly complicated, right? Um, and, and this works at any scale, any major scale. So if you start on D to D and you count, right? Um, it'll also give us the, it, it will equal the 12 steps, okay? And will also be made up of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, okay? So any major scale will give you that specific pattern. All right, let's go ahead and look at another one. Let's look at minor scales. So unlike our major scales, right? Our minor scales sound very sad and they also have a different pattern, right? So difference is those happy versus sad. So the minor scale has the pattern of a whole step, which has the two, right? Then that half step, which is one, then whole, which is two, whole, which is two, half, which is one, then whole two, and then whole two, which if you add all of those up, will again equal to our 12, okay? Isn't math simple, guys? Math and music working together to give us those intervals. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that on the keyboard. All right, so let's start with A minor scale, okay? So we're gonna take a look at that first A that we see, okay? So we're gonna count those steps. So A to A sharp, is half and then down from A sharp to B. That would give us a whole step. And then again, we get to that place on that keyboard where we don't have those black keys. So that gives us our half step, right? And then from C to C sharp, that's one. And then C sharp down to D, right? That's the other half, right? So half and half, that gives us a whole, right? And then D to D sharp, and then D sharp to E, that gives us another whole. And then again, no black key. So we're back again at that half step, right? And then from F to F sharp, that's a half, right? And then F sharp to G would give us a whole step. And then G to G sharp is half and G sharp 
to A would give us another half, which gives us a whole, right? Yes? All right, so let's look at that on the save. So we start at A, we go in ascending order, just like we did with the C major scale. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then A. And so again, if we count those steps together, whole steps equaling to two, the distance of two, and then half, distance of one, then we have 12, 12 steps, right? All right, anybody have questions with that? It's pretty simple, right? All we're doing is adding things together, okay? All right. All right. So uh, what I'd like to do, do for a moment before we jump into this next part, if I may, Dr. Garola, can we play? Can we play through all of that? Yeah, uh, go ahead, because you have okay. the keyboard in your room. Mine is in the other room. Oh, right. OK, <laughs> that's not a problem. So I want to kind of show you guys. Uh, I'm going to flip back really quick over to the chromatic scale um, and show you so that you can hear it. Uh, because I'm I'm always worried, you know, that we have to connect the visual with the audio, right? And so Dr. Grola did a beautiful job of explaining this, and I'm just going to play it for you so you can hear this. So I'll start with middle C right here. This is C on the piano, all right, which is this note that I'm pointing to right here. And so I'm going to go up each each letter here. Let me try to multitask. Watch the magic with my left hand and my right hand. Okay, this is C, this is C sharp, and then D, and then D sharp, and then E, whoops, and then F. Between E and F, that there's no black key, as she pointed out. F to F sharp, oh, hi, good morning. No, F to F sharp, <laughs> F, F, F sharp, G to G sharp, a, A sharp, B, and then finally C. And so that gives us our complete octave. Then she wanted to show us the intervals. So you have, I'm just going to play through them. There's a second. There's a third. There's a fourth. There's a fifth. Sixth. There's a seventh. There we go. Arthritis is creeping in. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay. So you can actually learn little songs for each of those intervals. And I can tell you the songs really quick in like a minute. Major second is Happy Birthday. A major third is Oh, Win the Saints. The fourth is Here Comes the Bride. The fifth is the beginning of Star Wars. Dum, ba, 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 right? Oh, uh, what's the sixth? Help me, Melissa. What's the sixth? It's a... Uh, what is it? Somewhere over the rainbow. Is it? No, it's not. Uh-uh. That's a little oh. bit... That's the that, octave. That's the octave, yeah. Uh... Dum, dum, dum. Alina, do you know the sixth? I, I wonder. If, oh, I can't remember what the sixth is. It'll come to me later. The seventh, dum, which I can't think of anything either. And then the octave, which I can think of Snow White. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh yeah, Seven Snow White. Dwarfs. I've never, I've never used that one. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah, it, that's Hi Ho from Snow White. Hi Ho. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of us I that are old and that. remember they, Snow White. Yeah, or or it's also somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. That's also yeah, the that. octave. Okay, so. <laughs> She talked about the intervals and, and counting the steps, and I think she did, that's fine. We did that. We moved to the major scale. So in the major scale, as uh, Dr. Carolla pointed out, 
you have these whole steps and half steps. Um, <clears throat> the whole step, which is a second, is it's it's actually a major second. A major second gives you happy birthday. Happy birthday. That's a major second. The half step is like the theme to Jaws. Right? There's a little shark. Uh-oh. Yes, that's the half step. Mm -hmm. So we have a combination of whole steps and half steps that make up the major and minor scale. Mm -hmm. The major scale recipe is specifically whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Very good, very good. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Melissa should be singing these, not me. <laughs> yeah, okay. but unfortunately, my piano's over there in another room. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I get stuck singing. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, so minor scales. Now, the minor scales, as she pointed out here, they sound very sad. Okay, so the minor scale... got the Kraft macaroni and cheese blues, okay, with the minor scale. So we have a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, and then finally a whole step. And for my music majors, this is specifically the natural minor scale. Okay, the natural minor scale. Now, so I just played that for you there. Okay, so it is a different recipe from the major scale. Notice how the W's and H's are, are rearranged a little bit for that scale. Now we're going to talk about another segment. So we're going to learn a couple of new scales today, and this goes for everybody, including my Theory 4 class. Uh, so this is very exciting because now you guys will be chatting away at 10 a.m. when I talk to you all in an hour. Uh, we're going to learn the whole tone scale. And the whole there's two whole tone scales. What we're doing is we're taking those 12 chromatic half steps and we're dividing them into two parts. OK, so you wind up with two scales that have six notes a piece. Now, the whole tone scale was used a lot by the French um, early 1900s. They become quite obsessed with it. Debussy uses it, the Impressionist movement. And so you'll see what I mean. So let me play the whole tone for you, starting on C first. This scale consists of consistent whole steps the entire time. I'm not going to have a single half step, all right? So. And as I've told many of you, pay my fingers no mind, I am not a pianist. Uh, <laughs> so I know I'm doing something goofy with my hands, like, well, it should have had six fingers, but alas. A six tone scale that is made up entirely of whole steps. So take a look. So there's two of those. The second one occurs on C sharp. So I just played this one for you. Let's look at this before I go on to the C sharp one. In the C whole tone scale, as we pointed out earlier, right here, there's no black key. E goes straight to F, which is a, which that becomes a half step. So in order to get a whole step, I have to go from E up to F sharp, okay? And then F sharp to G sharp, G sharp to A sharp, and then skip back up to C. So sometimes you'll see this spelled as a B flat. Sometimes you'll see it spelled as an A sharp, okay? And so this is what I just played for you. And I'll play it one more time. I have no idea. I bet you you start. 
on a different finger. I bet. Lessons with Dr. Mesa are in store for me eventually. All right. Here's a C-sharp whole, whole tone scale. So now, notice how we skipped all of these notes. Okay, we skipped all of these notes when we played the C whole tone. So you're probably thinking, well, what happens with those? It's its own whole tone scale. So here is the C-sharp whole tone scale. So it has kind of a mysterious sound to it because we are so accustomed in Western music to hear do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. We're so accustomed to that sound. So when we hear that, that's a tritone from C to F sharp. Okay, for those of you that the tritone in music is one of those intervals that was avoided for a long, long time because it's really ugly sounding. Real dissonant, real crunchy, what I like to call. And so we had tried to avoid that as much as we could until the 1900s. The 20th century brought about all these new sounds and new ideas. And so that's what's very interesting about the whole tone scale. Now for pop culture reference, um, what is a great example of that tritone, the use of the tritone? It's Danny Elfman, it's the theme to The Simpsons. So when you hear that, uh, right if you know the theme to the simpsons some of you are too young to know what that is anymore what happens when a chromatic scale is divided up into four this brings us to our second segment so so we just got done talking about the whole tone scales um before i go on maybe i should ask you guys if you have any questions questions preguntas Anyone? Are you guys asleep? Yes. Well, let's see. How about we, how about we quiz them? Let's <gasps> see if they pay attention to the pattern of a minor scale. Ooh. Ooh that's a good plan, Sam. <laughs> let's do it. All right. Hmm, let's see. Who should I pick on? I haven't picked on. Is Lorraine um, back? I don't know. No, she's not. Oh, she's not. No, oh, she's not. How about mm, Marlene? Okay. Um, whole step, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole step. Okay. <laughs> All right. You pick, uh, yeah, I was going to say. Like, yeah, you pick on, on a really fabulous student there. Marlene's going to. I know she's going to. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to make it easy the first one. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Give, give, ask, ask DeAndre for the C sharp whole tone. Oh, DeAndre, C sharp whole tone. You want me to just name the note? Sure. You can do the oh, notes. Okay. The pattern. Uh, C sharp, C sharp, F, G, A, B, and C sharp. Very good. Very All good. right. They're paying attention. Good. I'm they so glad to hear attention. that. Yeah, that's we're kind of sleep this morning. It is nope, very early. Not, said, I think um, Ms. Chen, Dr. Flores, and Dr. Garola are the ones that are falling asleep here. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <Get caught. laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, fun. You gotta wake up, right? <laughs> this is our week oh fun. Fun Chen. Love yeah. it. <laughs> okay. So let's let's jump into this next segment here. And oh, we're the going to yes, put a message for us. I yeah. think she was I mean in on that mm, on that sixth. Dashing through the snow? Is that what you meant? 
the interval. Is it? <gasps> Dashing yes. through the snow. Yes. To the and slay. Very yes. good. Thank you, Alina. <laughs> <laughs> I not think of it. I, no, no, I couldn't think of. I know the minor six is love story. It's Henry Mancini. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now kids don't know who Henry Mancini is. Um, so anyway, that's a long story. Um, he is. Time for some research, guys. I know, right? Henry Mancini's great. <laughs> so I'm going to move into the next segment here, which is dividing the chromatic scale into four parts now. Okay? Into four parts. So 12 divided by 4. What, what does that give us? Let's find out. Aha! So I love this little chart. I asked Dr. Garola to give us this little chart right here. That's um, because it it's basically the chromatic scale. Take a look. You've got C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. But when you divide it up this way on this grid, you can see that it also spells these three different chords. And what are these chords? These chords in music are called the fully diminished seventh chords. Now I like to call this the Maleficent chord, okay? Or this is Friday on Days of Our Lives. Now, this is the way I teach it in my theory classes. Those of you that took fundamentals with me 100 years ago, you'll remember this. This is Marlena is about to fall off the cliff, okay? So is Marlena going to survive? Will she be alive on Monday? Tune in on Monday to find out, right? So that is the fully diminished seventh chord. Now, <coughs> how... How, what is what does fully diminished seventh mean? So the fully diminished seventh chord consists of four notes that are separated by minor thirds. Okay, a minor third interval has one half step, two half steps, three half steps. So C to E flat is three half steps. Then the E flat. One, two, the E flat to G flat is another minor third. And so the separation between each of these notes is a minor third each. They're equally divided, all right? Three half steps times four equals our 12 half steps in the chromatic scale. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait for the magic. And I put the inharmonic spellings on there as well. If those of you are a little confused. You. Yes, with, with yeah, the flat. Right. While I, while the screen takes its sweet time because our internet is acting crazy this morning, let me explain inharmonic spellings really quick for those of you that are music appreciation. An enharmonic spelling, every note on the piano or on any instrument, quite frankly, has multiple spellings, okay? So, for example, C on the piano is also known as B sharp, and it can also be known as D double flat, okay? So, you're probably thinking, why do those note names is, exist? Why don't you just call C, C all the time? Well, because of the fact that we use the same recipe for all of our major scales and all of our minor scales, sometimes, <clears throat> let me refresh that. Oh, oh, very exciting. What's going to happen? Okay, we'll get to this slide in a moment here. Um, yeah, so what happens is, is that if I'm playing, uh, let's say, I don't know, C sharp major, right? In every minor scale and every major scale, I can only use the letter once in those scales. I cannot duplicate a letter, okay? So, for example, um, in, uh, let me think of, okay, C sharp major, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp. Now, right there, 
instead of using E sharp, why don't I use F natural? C sharp, D sharp, F natural, F sharp, because I can't use the letter F twice. Okay, does that make sense? So because of that, we wind up with notes that have multiple spellings, okay, to cover all of our major and minor scales. So let me find my place here in this madness. There we go. I'm getting closer. I'm getting warmer. And I'm sorry that my internet, I don't know if Dr. Garola can take over the PowerPoints or, oh, here they are. They're loading. Here okay. we go. Here we go. Can everybody see that? Yes. We Good. Can see it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Give me, yeah, it's going to hopefully load here. So here's the next question. So I can divide the chromatic scale by four. What happens when I divide the chromatic scale by three? So that is the question on our minds. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Very exciting. Here we go. So I wind up with something called augmented triads. Now for my music theory two students, we haven't talked too much about these. Um, we did talk about them when we stacked chords on the different major and minor scales, um, but uh, we haven't exclusively talked about the augmented triad. It occurs on Roman numeral three in the minor scale. Okay, Roman numeral three. So if I'm going, that's the beginning of my, my minor scale. On Roman numeral three, when I'm in the melodic minor, that augmented triad has this very distressing sound, doesn't it? The augmented triad is two major thirds. And so when we, let's, let's count those half steps for a moment. One, two, three, four. I have four half steps between each of those notes. Okay, so this is uh, usually a chord that was used a lot in the 1950s, 1960s, and a lot of your um, investigative, like detective series. If you think of Dragnet, the, the years back um and again you're probably watching those tv shows on nick at night and reruns and things like that because it's literally 70 years ago um but yeah all of those late 50s 1960s or film noir uh movies like sunset boulevard is one of my favorites they use that chord a lot because it's sort of it's very eerie sounding very mysterious so let's take a look at the spellings of these chords. C, E, G sharp instead of just C, E, G. How about the one built on C sharp? We have C sharp, F, A, D, F sharp, A sharp, and D sharp, which can also be spelled as E flat, G to B, right? So, so we wind up with four half steps in between each of these. So here's four, here's four, and then four more back to the C winds up being 12 half steps. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's take a look. We've got our group breakout session. L before we break out into groups here, let me ask everybody, how are we doing? Do we understand what's going on? Are we, are we doing okay? Anybody need us to go over anything? Don't be shy. Ask away. I'm going to unshare for a moment so everybody can see our beautiful faces. We've got a good crowd today. What do you guys think? Oh, it's all new to me, Miss Gomez said. Miss Gomez is from the reading department. <laughs> well, welcome to Music 101 in an hour and a half, right? <laughs> 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 it's um it's quite interesting yeah it's yeah. a lot it yeah. is i mean um but this is what makes music so unique right all of the different combinations that we can possibly get with music is what makes each piece by any composer 
unique. That's why no two pieces can sound exactly alike, right? Um, all right, so let's go ahead and break out into those breakout rooms. I cannot do the breakout sessions. Can you guys do the breakout session? Does it doesn't give me the icon? Mm, let it me see. Is Tata Flores because she's the organizer. Oh, okay. Right. Lucky me. Okay, let me see. Remind. I found it. I found it. I found it today all by myself. And before all you do that, and you're finished. <laughs> Sorry. Don't wanna be <laughs> all by myself. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, Fon. Okay. We're being weird. Uh, okay. I love it. <laughs> I just cannot sing because if I sing, I will scare everyone. Like everyone is going to access the meeting. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay, uh, we're going to do three breakout rooms, okay? Is that cool with everybody? Yes, and before um, we break out, um, if you guys can go to the file tab in... Um, in the main chat or the main room, right underneath the files at the top, there is a worksheet called interval worksheet and you guys can actually pull it up from there. Um, and then we can go ahead and get to those. I will also try to share on my end. Hopefully it'll let me. Okay. Everybody right, good? Cool. Okay, I'm gonna start the rooms. Okay, bye everybody. It's not going. <laughs> oh, hold on. Give it a moment. It's spinning. It's spinning. Magic and is about to happen. On the top, you have the you have the dry room. You can click on the dry room, or you can wait. Okay. There we go. They're going.
<laughs> then so on and so forth. All right, we're back. Yeah, we're back. Okay, cool. Hello. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> okay, now la, let me figure out how to get back, uh, get our Mamu's Coffee Clutch back. I think it's that one. Let me see. And now let me share. Screen two. Okay, breakout room is closed. Join main, someone just removed you from the breakout. Okay, dismiss. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, good. All right, cool. Okay, and I'm sharing again. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> Sorry for our internet today, everybody. Yeah. This has been... Okay, we're starting to get a few more slides here. Um, somewhere around 25 or 26. Come on. Yeah, I think after this, let me see. Do I have it? Do I have mine open? There we go. All right, we're on this one. Okay, everybody. So, first of all, as this is loading, I'm going to let Dr. Garola walk us through the rest of this here. <laughs> all right, guys. So, a little bit of tidbit information. I don't know if anybody knows, but um, Pythagoras, which is this gentleman right here, um, who lived right around 570 to 495 BC, roughly, right, is accredited for discovering that music could be made using different frequency ratios, okay? Why is this important? Well, because any time that you, you hit a certain key or strike a certain string, right, um, it gives you overtones, um, and that kind of gives us the harmonic series. So there's always tones happening underneath the main note that you hear when you hear a note on a keyboard or maybe a note on a guitar or a string instrument, okay? Um, and so what happens is, is so they have this wave that occurs, right? And the wave when it's cut um, into half, it basically produces an octave. OK, so there's all these tones happening, right? All these tones happening at the same time. But the lower the frequency, the tone of the pitch, right? The lower it is, the more audible it is to the human ear. The higher it is, right, the harder it is for us to hear because it's above what our ears are capable of actually pick, picking up, OK? So there's all these overtones that are happening. So when we basically divide a string, right? And I'm going to kind of show you. I'm going to scoot back a little bit. So this is the guitar, right? Everybody's familiar with the guitar. The guitar um, has different frets on it, which is where each little square is, right? And from the head or the neck of the guitar down, um, if we divide it, right smack in the middle, which is usually fret 12, um, and you slightly put your finger over it, it creates the octave tone. So if we have this low string here, right? So we have this note, and we lightly put our finger over it on fret 12, which is the midway point, okay, of the string halfway point it's going to produce the octave so hopefully you guys can hear this can you hear that i'm not sure can you hear it I can, yeah i can hear it yeah can hear yeah. It? okay one more time. Hear it. One more time. Yes. right that's the low and then here is the octave that it produces and what is cool also is that when you when you're striking that string and you let it go all the other strings are vibrating as well right but you don't hear those because 
they're very high or they're very they're too low right so everything in music right is consisted of a specific ratio, okay? Uh, the simpler the ratio that we have, the more consonant the interval, which is, again, pleasing to the ear, and we're able to pick it up, right? However, the more complex the ratio is, or the fraction, if you wanna look at it as in a fraction form, right? The more dissonant sounding the pitch or the tone um, that it's going to produce, okay? Um, so again, when you strike that string, there's all these overtones, these other tones that are happening at the exact same time that um, we typically don't hear, okay? And they actually give us, they produce basically our C major triad, okay? Those are the main three that we hear, like the C, the octave, and the perfect fifth are usually the, the most prominent ones that we hear. But there are, are different ratios, fractions, divisions of these frequencies, of these wavelengths that give us different pitches that we use in music, okay? And this, we're going to be talking about this in depth more on Friday, and I just kind of wanted to attach a tidbit on that. But like I was saying, when we divide that string in half, right at that 12th thread of the guitar, it produces a two to one ratio, okay, which gives us that octave. Um, if we uh, were to go on the seventh fret, roughly, it produces the fifth, okay, which is a three to two octave. Then we have the perfect fourth, which produces a four to three ratio and then the major third which produces a five to four and then we have the minor six which is an eight to five and then a minor third which is a five to three and so the more complex it is you know the more dissonant sounding that pitch is going to be the simpler it is the easier right so how do we find the frequency of a note given a particular ratio well we're gonna end up getting these ratios and multiplying using fractions, using the concepts that we talked about on Monday to figure out all of these different frequencies and the hertz and the uh, to these different notes. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it to Fawn because this is Fawn's area. So take it away, Fawn. Okay. Well, it's my turn. <laughs> Okay, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, share my screen uh, very quick. All right, so continue with, uh, with that. Let's talk about, uh, take a look at the frequency. You might wondering what is the frequency and how we see frequency in math, right? So a frequency basically is describing um the you know how often uh things happen during uh you know a period of time for the music you guys are looking at right now is basically is looking at um the how often it happens per second i am sharing hopefully you can see this um this website and this is uh, giving you some of the idea how the frequencies work. Like it's just thinking about you draw a circle, right? And in a second, so the frequency we were talking about 440 hertz over there is talking about uh, that is in a second you draw like um, 440 circles, the cycles over there. And you can see that if the frequency is getting higher, right, that's faster and um basically that is the idea of the frequency and we in our map we were talking about if you have the higher frequency that will give you uh if we, uh, you know the the distant travel in the same that will give you a, a smaller like a, a radius but we don't get into that kind of math right okay so once again the frequency is talking about is the reciprocal of the period you know, if you're taking longer time to finish a circle, then you have least frequency, I believe that is in your music as well. So in the circular motion, which you are seeing that the frequency, basically, I'm not going to get into really dividing that part, basically it's the velocity, you know, how fast it things travel divided by the circumference. If you don't know what circumference is, is the distance around a circle for that. And yeah, that's what you can see if you have a fixed speed and then if you, you see the um, 
2 pi r r is the radius. So if the radius is long, a uh, bigger, like a longer, right, bigger circle, then we be have a least frequency, like a slower for that. Right. Okay. So talk about the. Uh, I just learned that that's the A. <laughs> so the A if we can say it's 440 hertz, that means it's 440 cycles per second in 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 this meaning for that. Oh, that's very fast, right? We're talking about fractions. We talk that's uh we written a fraction. Let's talk, uh, review, bring things back for Monday. We we're talking about the whole right divided into pieces. And for the thing about this, if this is three and this is two, so the ratio, instead of we say that it's three out of five pieces, we talk about the part to part. So the ratio is three to two. However, you think about the equivalent fraction, we think, okay, how about the three pieces? We are going to divide it into uh, six pieces, which means each little piece we divide another sub two uh, pieces. So the three will become six pieces, and then two will become four pieces, but the size are different. So that's six to four. Therefore, the ratio three to two is equivalent to six to four. How can we get that? That's the idea of we have each piece from the three piece multiplied by two means which piece split into two pieces, two group for that, right? So that is what the ratio, then you eventually you can see the equivalent uh, frequency or uh, uh, ratios there. All right, so that's where we say three to two is the same as a six to four. Let's connect it with the music. And once again, this is the first time I'm learning the music and I re realized, oh, the interval in music is slightly different from the interval we are talking about in math. So I'm letting, uh, talking about uh, learning that. So the ratio in the music it is, uh, is um, talking about you have a frequency one in comparing frequency two. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? I have musicians in here. <laughs> so, um, so go ahead. I was just going to say, so yeah, so when the sound hits, it makes that first initial wave and at the mm -hmm. same time it's cut in, in two and then in three. So the octave produces that one to two ratio. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, and and, uh, and then when you add the, int, uh, add the adding the intervals in music in D is multiplying frequency ratios. Why? Indeed, that got into the college uh, algebra and we, uh, we got into logarithmic and here, but I'm just going to show you very quickly. You don't have to memorize this whole thing. <laughs> Basically in math, we can prove that when you uh, when you adding the two intervals together is the same thing as multiplying the ratio or the new music note, and the left-hand side is the proof. And just, uh, I'm using a graph to show it to you, maybe the proof on the left-hand side, what it meant in the right-hand side. So if you have three pitches, which is three frequency in here, right? One, two, and three, and between frequency one and frequency two, that's uh, like we say that in math, we say the distance between them, but in music is at the interval, we call that interval one, right? So you have interval two in here. Indeed, when together, when you add, so basically, you at interval interval one and interval two in here. On the left hand side, you can see mathematical proof that is say that okay, uh, R three, which is the ratio three, which is the frequency three to frequency two, that the ratio of that. Uh, in after the mathematical proof in here, I can simply prove that is the multiplication of these two ratio with ratio two. Ratio two is the ratio between frequency two and frequency one, and ratio uh, on oh no, the frequency three and frequency two. Ratio one is frequency two to frequency one. Okay, so how the related to the to the uh, one you just saw the table in here, and that was the, I put out this table right? the ratio two to one is the octaves and so on, and how the related to this? Think about this. If I think about mathematically four. Uh, five four multiply six feet. When we do a multiplication of math, we say multiply the numerator together, new pri no, multiply the denominator together. So it's five times six, four times five. You definitely can do three times or oh, five times six, thirty divided by twenty. 
that's okay. Uh, usually in math, we will say, okay, we don't want to deal with huge number since sometimes we make curious mistake. We intend to find the common factors, which means the number multiplied together are the same. So you find that numerator have a five as a factor, denominator have a five as a factor. I'm going to cancel those common factor because the five divided by five is one. So the same thing as six, four. Between six and four, uh, we talked about the ratio before, right? This ratio six, four is the same thing as three, two. It, mathematically, you can see both six and four have the factors of two. You divide both by two, so it's three, two, right? So that's math. How that related to your, your music? Think about that five to four. If you see a table, five to four, that's a major third, right? And the ratio six to five, that is minor third. Then you can see, okay, major third plus a minor third, what's three to two? Take a look at the table. Is that, that is exactly the perfect fit in here. I just show it to you. Mathematically, I can prove that that's how you get major third plus a minor third is equal to perfect fit. Is that correct in music? <laughs> okay, so that is the, uh, the ratio and frequency and one more thing I want to show to you, I know that Melissa is going to talk about that too. Just a little bit more math, right? Think about the ratio is frequency one to frequency two or frequency two to frequency one, whatever the order you put that. If that's a three to two, if you are given the frequency two is 440 hits, which is the A, right? Then how to find frequency one? Then you would just like, okay, what I'm going to do is think about uh, frequency one, I'm going to use frequency one divided by three parts, and then frequency two will be two part that. So which means frequency two, two parts 440, each part will be 440 divided by two is a 220. That is the concept of multiply by fraction, but if you memorize multiply uh, math, then you just, okay, I'm just going to use three half times 440, which is we are going to get um, 600 uh 60 hertz in here how about if my frequency one is 440 how can i find frequency two then the frequency two basically thing about you use the top the numerator divide by three parts right 440 related to three then frequency two is going to take two part of that so that's the reason i okay i you see the math uh expression over there you do some math you can pull out your calculator because you are not in my math class. You can use your calculator. <laughs> so you got 880 divided by three. Usually we like to write it as a miss number 293 and one third hertz, right? That's approximately 293.3 hertz. So that is math. Okay, I'm going back to get back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. I was going to say, so we're, we're basically kind of out of time today, but I think that on Friday, we're going to basically go over a lot of this again and we're on Friday. I can kind of briefly talk a little bit about Beethoven because we promised Beethoven today. And I told Melissa, I said, we've got to put in a slide about Beethoven. And I put in the slide. <laughs> she, she did. We've run out of time, but on Friday we'll have plenty of time actually to talk about all of this again, because I'm, I'm looking at it too. And I'm like, wow, math right? The final frontier. These are the yeah. voyages of Fan Chen's Starship Enterprise. <laughs> and so we will talk again on Friday and we'll talk about the harmonic series in more depth. And finally, a little bit about Beethoven. That, that'll be your candy at the end of the week. Okay, guys. So for now, goodbye, everybody. And I will join my Music Theory 4 class in just a moment. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>